Due to numerous requests, we've made a series of videos detailing how to transform a four-stroke gasoline engine into a steam engine. These videos will lead you step-by-step step using animations and real-life close-ups as we convert two common engine configurations from gasoline to steam. It is recommended that you watch all of the videos before embarking on this project to be sure that you are confident in your ability to complete the required task. We are going to convert two separate Predator 212 engines, a Hemi and a Standard. The slightly different valve assemblies of these two engines represent the configurations of most modern four-stroke engines. The videos begin with the external components such as the fuel and exhaust systems already stripped off the engine and the spark plug removed. If you are using a Predator engine, save the carburetor stud bolts for later use in modifying the camshaft. If you are already familiar with how valves and camshafts work and how to get your camshaft out, then skip directly to video number two using the link provided in the description of this video. Otherwise, let's get started. The first step is to expose the upper valve assembly by removing the valve covers. Most valve covers come off easily. On a Predator engine, remove these four bolts. Notice that there are differences in the appearance of the valve assemblies between the two engine platforms. The functions of the components, however, are the same. On the left is the exhaust valve assembly, and on the right is the intake valve assembly. Let's rotate the flywheel of the engine clockwise and observe the valves functioning. I'm going to take a moment here to point out a small blip or bump during the operation of the exhaust valve. This bump appears out of place of the otherwise smooth operation of the valve. Ignore this as we discuss the function of the valves. It is the result of an internal low speed compression release used for easy starting of a gasoline engine. We will remove it soon enough. So once again, let's watch as we rotate the engine and observe each valve opening and closing. So what makes all this happen? Let's take a close look at each component and understand how it works. We'll start with the rocker arms. They are slightly different between the engines, but they function the same. A rocker arm rocks back and forth on a pivot point. The rocker arm is activated by the up and down motion of the push rod. The push rod is located towards the front of the rocker arm. The end is secured into a small indent on the rocker arm. The push rod is activated by a tappet, which is following the lobe on the specifically timed rotating camshaft. On the other end of the rocker arm is the valve. As it moves up and down, the valve opens and closes ports in the cylinder to let gases in and out. Now let's go back and rotate our engine. Observe the push rods rocking the rocker arms, which are in turn opening and closing the valves. The valve spring encompasses the valve and provides the necessary pressure to hold the assembly together. Before we disassemble the upper valve assembly, let's understand an engine position called top dead center. Top dead center is when the piston is at its topmost position during the stroke. The piston achieves this position twice during one cycle of a four stroke engine. The first time is when the exhaust valve has just closed and the intake valve is beginning to open. The second time is when both valves are fully closed during the compression stroke. During this second top dead center position, there is no valve spring pressure on either side. This is the optimal position for disassembly. Let's have a look at that with the Hemi engine. Notice the exhaust valve closing followed by the intake valve opening. Rotate 360 degrees and both valves will be closed. There's play in the flywheel and both rocker arms are loose. 
This same procedure applies to the standard engine. Exact top dead center is not necessary at this point as long as both rockers are loose. We will begin by disassembling the intake valve assembly. On the Hemi, like many engines, the rocker arm pivots on a shaft. The shaft is usually held into place with C-clips. These clips are easily removed by placing a screwdriver into either of the slots on the clip and prying it out sideways. The shaft then slides easily out and the rocker arm is free of the engine. The push rod is then removed. On many engines there is a cap on top of the valve shaft. Remove it with a magnet. The adjustment screw and lock nut stay with the rocker arm. On the standard engine, remove the lock nut followed by the valve adjustment nut using a socket or standard wrench. The rocker arm will then be free of the engine along with the push rod. Categorize and store your parts in a clean environment. Repeat the same procedure for the exhaust valve assembly and you'll have an engine that looks like this. We're now ready to remove the camshaft. Removal of the camshaft is a simple procedure which is nearly identical on most overhead valve engines. First, drain whatever oil is in your engine. We are now going to remove the crankcase cover on the shaft or PTO side of the engine. Once the bolts are out, the cover should slide off. If it sticks, you can tap lightly with a block of wood or rubber hammer on any of the extending surfaces. Use care as you slide the crankcase cover off the crankshaft. The rubber seal must remain intact and free of debris. The crankcase gasket plays an important role in the functionality of the engines. The thickness of the gasket provides the necessary clearance for the camshaft to turn freely in its seat. Let's look closely at the camshaft gear and the crankshaft gear. Each gear will have top dead center markings in the form of a groove or indent. When these are aligned, the piston is at exact top dead center. Rotate the flywheel until the marks are aligned. and the camshaft will lift straight out. This leaves the two tappets. They slide right out of their ports and are usually interchangeable. Temporarily reassemble your engine minus the camshaft and tappets. You can use the old gasket. Take care of the rubber seal. You can just snug the bolts for now. You may now proceed to video number two using the link provided in the description of this video.